So uh, welcome to the territorial evidence of rural development and change in the Nordic country session. My name is Anna and I am a geographer and the GS analysis at Nordregio. Um, I would like to introduce Nordregio briefly. Uh, so we are the research institute and it's an international center for regional development and planning established by the Nordic Council of Ministers. We are around 45 employees and we do board research of topics uh, with the main areas are so regional development, rural development, urban planning, demography governance. We have a strong department of GIS analysis, which I'm representing, and we also do communications and outreach. And here's the link for our website in case you would like to uh, see uh, deeper in what we do, what we stand for. We have uh, publications there, we have our maps, we publish our events, so take a look if you're interested. Uh, so agenda for today, I will talk about the territorial evidence of rural development and change that is happening in the Nordic countries. I would try to make uh, Norway in the center, in the uh, center of the context. Um, and I would like to um, present some of the projects that we have been involved with and speak briefly about them because we do a lot of different projects and it's really hard to actually pinpoint of what are the changes, what are the trends, it's all common complex. Um, <clears throat> first, I would just like to say that Nordics, it's a very um, bland region, one can say, there is a diverse region and uh, as you see here, I just put some pictures. You may take a look later. The presentation will be shared. Uh, all the countries are unique within the region and have different trends in terms of uh, population, immigration, uh, employment and other social economic parameters. The common trend is the population is growing. Uh, it's uh, quite a big share of foreign born population. Uh, the population is aging, uh, the immigration is unevenly distributed between the regions, given also urban and rural regions. Uh, there, there is a difference within countries and um, between countries and the social economic characteristics. Anna? And there is, Anna, I'm yes? sorry to interrupt you, but uh, did you accidentally unshare your screen for us? No, uh, let me double check. I still share it. Let me reshare it again. Yeah, I think it might have come. We see up. it. You can see it. Yes, we can see it. OK, yeah. that's good. All right, it must be on my okay. end. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And there are difference between the international and domestic migration trends. Uh, let us concentrate on Norway. Uh, Norway is a very interesting country in terms of ge geographical peculiarities. It's stretched, as you know, from south to north uh, with uh, a lot of uh, fjord line, uh, uh, mountains which make it uh, interesting in terms of uh, population patterns and governance and other trends. Uh, the population of Norway is around 5-4 million people. Um, it's actually uh, experiencing now decline in the population growth and here I collected some statistics also from the Norwegian uh, statistics and the statistics that we also um, extract and uh, produced from these official statistics. Uh, so if we look at the immigration pattern, uh, Norway um, is mostly um, benefiting from the uh, work uh, reasons for immigration. Uh, it's, it is a bit of a difference compared to the other countries uh, within the region. Uh, most people live in a city, 82% and 44% of the population is concentrated in the Oslo Fjord region, while only 9% live in the north. Uh, Norway is experiencing the aging of the population, which is more prevalent in the rural areas. And here I put also some distribution by the uh, age and gender and education level. One can see it arise uh, within the regions in Norway. So we already have a picture uh, that every region is different. Um, here it's just the distribution of the workforce by the origin. So we can see that it's uh, mostly um, 
Norwegian people or like Norwegian born people uh, in the workforce, but they are trans of up till, let's say, 13% of the workforce is coming outside from Norway with most of the people coming from uh, European countries in Eastern Europe. Um, so this is our flagman product, uh, the state of the Nordic region. It's uh, published every second year and it presents a collection of maps, figures and analysis within our main research areas as demography, labor market and economy. We just have published uh, uh, State of Nordic Regions 2022. You can find it on the links and it's also given the overview uh, from the uh, pandemics. So it takes into consideration the new trends that may happen within the region. Um, So there is some maps I just extracted that we in the GIS team been working with. Uh, this is, for example, the population that been on the short term, term leave from work. You can see uh, it's on the municipal level. And if we take a closer look uh, for the Norway, for example, we can see it's uh, quite a few regions that are dark colored, which means a high uh, share of employees uh, being put on the uh, uh, long term or short term leave from work. Uh, and here is the remote, remote work potential, for example. We see that um, the darker color in the capital area and on the other bigger cities area, which means uh, that here the workforce actually has a possibility or chance to work remotely compared to more rural areas where it can be harder for people to do so. Um, this is also an interesting uh, map that presents the uh, change in the work mobility. It's the data from Google. I would just like to pinpoint that it's a bit hard to follow for the rural regions because due to the few people living in these areas, it's a consideration of the uh, personal data um, handling. So uh, there is, for example, um, a problem that we have when going to deeper analysis with the smaller areas that we just simply do not have access to the data for some reasons. One of them is uh, keeping the, um, how to say, secret tests for people living within these areas. Um, <clears throat> this is another uh, picture that tried to um, visualize how, how vibrant is actually Nordic region. It shows the uh, biggest Nordic minority in every municipality. And as we see, maybe there is no surprise, but in the old border regions, it's the nation from the other side of the regions that prevail. But interesting trend, I would say, happens in uh, Norway in uh, rural areas. Uh, the red color represents the Danish people. So it's the biggest Nordic minority uh, within this region are uh, people that are originated from Denmark, for example. Uh, so, yeah, this is just another um, map uh, for the social economics that we uh, normally show. It's the total population change and uh, red color, yellow and uh, pink color show the population decrease and blue and green show the population increase. So if we just take a overview and look, we can see that yes, population is decreasing in the rural areas and increasing in the uh, big city areas and uh, municipalities next to them. Um, this is the um, um, interactive uh, mapping tool that we developed at Nordregio. Uh, it's uh, called Nordic uh, Service Mapper. So it visualizes the proximity to different types of services, uh, which for now are grocery stores, pharmacies, libraries, and schools. Uh, you can see here, so in different colors, you see uh, distances uh, to the closest facility. You can analyze it for the whole country. You can break it down to the uh, rural urban topology or you can actually choose, for example, two municipalities and compare them uh, between the, within each other. And the size uh, of the uh, cell represents also the 
population that lives within the cell. Uh, this is another interactive resolution tool, um, one could say mapping platform. Uh, so here we publish our statistic data and analysis and everyone it's open, so everyone may um, choose the region or the municipality of interest and compare, analyze the statistics that is behind it, see different time series. So it's a very useful research tool for um, both researchers and specialists and policymakers to, to see different combined uh, characteristics um, on the map and see what are the regions actually that surround in this uh, municipality itself. Um, now I would like briefly to go through the projects that um, I find relative to the uh, topic of today's discussion. So Sherpa is the um, project that um, acts as the sustainable um, hub to engage into rural areas within a range of different actors. Uh, so it's the platform that um, engage cooperation of um, science, society and policy. It's um, European Union based, so Norway sadly not within the project, but I would just to bring it up as an example of how it can be, and it's actually been a pretty successful project. <laughs> yes, uh, so um, as I know, a lot of actors have actually gained and got positive experience from it, and now it's in the second phase. Oh, sorry, I jumped in. So here you can see the range of countries and it's been uh, up to 40 uh, different multi-actor platforms within this project. Uh, this is the ongoing project that we have right now, uh, Essential Rural Services in the Nordic region. It's a bigger project and it's commissioned by the Nordic Thematic Group of Green and Inclusive Rural Development. Uh, and uh, Right now, it's uh, more in the literature review and methodology established part. But I would like to present that, uh, for example, this map uh, that's already a product of the first um, part of the project. Uh, this map, uh, this this data is based on the Nordic service map for accessibility that I showed you before, uh, given the groceries, pharmacies, libraries. Um, Yes, I will share all the links that will be in the presentation. Uh, so um, this map simply shows um, for each municipality within each country um, how good is the accessibility to the essential services. And it's not the final product, it's just the methodology trial. So we just have four services for now. But it's, uh, I think, important thing to show here that it's relative for each country because, as we know, the population uh, size is different, the area is different, uh, the geographical peculiarities within area are different. It's simply sometimes not possible to have a good access due to mountains, lakes or something else. So this is shows a relative, a relative coefficient for example, for all the municipalities in Norway. So they are all ranked and you can see it's only rural municipalities presented here. So you can see there is still a huge variation between different rural municipalities within the country. Given that we have a very sustainable uh, methodology to use it. This I can talk for a long time, but I just want to present that. Uh, yes, it varies and it varies a lot. Uh, another project is rural uh, attractiveness, uh, and it's a Nordic cooperation program for regional development project. Uh, so within this project, um, population analysis, shift share job analysis, case studies uh, have been presented, and it's the first time we use the story maps. Uh, I will put the link also so you can go and see actually the beautiful visualization and the stories from from every case study place. And um, the project analyzes the differences between the migration jobs and answering the question why people move, why they move to 
why have been living there? What motivates the young people to make the choices they make? And um, here is uh, just some map products from this. So we again can see quite a variety within different municipalities. And uh, this is a relative local employment uh, level. So we see some regions doing much better than the others. And uh, also doing quite well on the migration patterns. That means that they stay neutral, they don't lose population, they don't gain population. And in Norway, we had one case study, municipality Altal. So one can go and follow the example of Altal uh, on the story map online. Uh, another project um, I think very exciting and we do um, one can say follow up right now. So it's a population change dynamic uh, in Nordics. So it analyzes the relative change in population size at the municipal level in Nordics for 10 year period. Uh, we use grid data as a tool for studying uh, change on the residential level. Uh, by grid data, I mean that all the territory is divided by southern by southern meter uh, net. So on this cell level, the population is analyzed. Of course, there have been a technical uh, considerations within the grids and the aggregation problem as the grids uh, within countries, they may overlap like this, for example. So then you need to like crop and change. And the data accessibility is a problem because as I mentioned before, for smaller places, it's under the protection. So you cannot actually e extract like age, gen gender, for example, which is very important to understand what's actually going on in the region. Is it young people? Uh, is it gender balanced? Um, so this data is hard to access and in some countries it can be very pricey to get this data. In some countries within Nordics, I mean, it's not possible to get this data. And then it's the problem of harmonization of data, of course. So it's a lot of technical difficulties behind it. And yes, this is one of the <laughs> most complex problems that we normally have working on the problems or on the projects within Nordics. It's much more diverse than one might think, actually, the data and the way it's been uh, collected. So here are just an example of population change rate, if we take a traditional way and represented by the municipality. So we can see the red regions, they show the uh, shrinking of populations and blue regions, the increase of population. If we break down here five by five uh, kilometers, we already see the different pattern here. Not all the areas, for example, in the north of Norway and uh, Sweden are populated at all. And uh, if we go even deeper here, it's a bit hard to see, but it's a very high resolution map. You can zoom in, in and see um, up to this level, what happens by one by one kilometer uh, cell. So then you can actually see if you compare it to tables that um, the share of regions with growth or shrink may change even up to opposite for some countries and some municipalities, just because we take different uh, basis for analysis, different administrative unit, or in this case, a cell unit. Um, and um, the multilocality is the um, project that is ongoing now. And as I said, it also got the, it's, it's a uh, big project. And uh, part of this project is aiming to update the urban rural typology. So the plan is to draft to the grid based urban rural topology level uh, and to present the results as an open and free source uh, that the data can be um, used for researchers and use actually the Nordic threshold and normalization for the population instead of the European ones. Uh, so here I just uh, bring the example, it's an ongoing project, so it's, it's not a final product, but you see we break down the urban rural regions on much more uh, criteria on the following indicators. So it's a multi-indicator analysis. 
and you see, for example, we with zoom into Trondheim um, region, uh, we identify the inner urban, outer urban, peripheric urban, local, rural, rural heartland. So it's um, areas is more complex divided than just urban or uh, rural. So um, my final slide, sorry for jumping. Uh, so what is Norway relative position within the concept? Um, yes, <laughs> it's hard to just jump to the conclusions, of course, but as I mentioned, the da data harmonization, the lack of data availability is a problem sometimes to drive uh, deeper solutions and actually to understand the uh, trends within small locality. Uh, we see the need of re-identifying re rural and urban areas within scaling for the Nordics. It's not possible to use the European uh, terms that are being created for much more dense populated areas and bigger cities. Um, we see very good examples of how governance in Norway, how governance initiatives support more equal development of the regions. This we've seen, for example, on the service provision a map that I showed before. That's overall Norway uh, doing much better in the access to the essential services than other countries within the region, just because there are government initiatives and laws that actually say, like, as an example, that this service needs to be accessible or needs to be present in the municipality. Uh, yes, there is the distance and transport issues affecting the connectivity within country, partly due to the um, geography of the uh, very complex geography of the country. Uh, the trends we see right now after the pandemics, are, for example, are gentrification of the rural areas and new trends of rural urban uh, interactions uh, that happened during pandemics the number of second homes, the prices for the property increased, of course, but we are still don't know what trends stay and what trends keep after the pandemics and how they will develop in the future. So now it's the process of monitoring these things also. Uh, dig digitalization of services and new types of models for service provision uh, are a great support for the rural er areas. So it's some a uh, new trend that we see and we try to monitor and we have projects within the digitalization also. Uh, there are impacts of border restrictions during the pandemics. Uh, for example, Sweden, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Denmark, Norway. Uh, these trends are present and it has changed already the rural, um, the rural uh, areas, uh, population and work possibilities and other trends. It may come back to the situation pre-pandemic, it made to develop to something different, but overall uh, the follow-up and cooperation and continue to the projects are needed. And as my conclusion, I would like to highlight uh, that the rural areas are different and it's important not to make general conclusions and present some simplified analysis. Uh, the analysis shall be complex, it shall be problem-based and it shall have consideration on the local peculiarities and possibilities for the region. And it's important to remember that every place is unique and one may need, may need to have a different initiatives and um, implement different policies for the success and for the sustainable development of just this municipality and this region. Thank you.